Uh, this is John work with Pierre Lanfouc. Um, Okay, um, so lattice based cryptography is an important topic. And so uh, it's one of the few, uh, one of the few uh, type of problem where we have both uh, security guarantees, uh, many efficient construction, and my, it may be uh, post quantum cryptography too. Um, so in this presentation, um, I will describe the Bloom Kalei Wasserman algorithm. Uh, for binary LWE and the improvements we give, uh, and also uh, the cryptographic application uh, to subset sum and then true, and also other applications uh, which are fully in uh, lattice problems. So the binary LWE problem, um, we are given an unlimited number of samples where the vectorial part, which I call A, is uh, uniform, and the error, which is uh, E, is sampled according to Gaussian. And we are given uh, a scalar product with uh, the same binary vector. And the goal is to find uh, the binary vector, which is S. So uh, because we are using um, binary vectors, the modulus in a, uh, Q is uh, kind to the precision, so we can uh, divide everything by Q, and uh, this will be simpler for us to work. So uh, for this problem, uh, we know that uh, it's unexpected to have an algorithm with uh, a running time which is below two to the n over log n but uh, all previous algorithms work in exponential running time. So our results, so first uh, we find a sub-exponential algorithm, which, is, uh, which runs in time to the n over log log n for most parameters. And uh, we can even uh, have the same complexity for larger secrets. Also, uh, n true can be reduced uh, realistically to this problem and then can be solved with the same running time. And uh, it also works uh, for a subset sum. Each time you have a density which converges to zero, then uh, it will be sub-exponential. So the first BKW algorithm, uh, I will start by recalling it. So first being a LWE sampled is a somewhat linear property. So the difference of two samples is another sample, but we are uh, adding more noise each time we do that. So uh, what we do is uh, we partition the coordinates into k blocks, and one coordinate that we want to uh, discover with high probability. And so each time uh, we will compute the difference of two samples such that uh, one new block of coordinates will be equal to zero for all generated sample. And if we repeat this k times, then uh, there is only one coordinate of the secret. And uh, if the noise is not too large, then we can uh, discover it. So uh, here is a precise analysis. Uh, we can uh, define the bias of a random variable, x over r, uh, as this. And then uh, we know that the piling up lemma, which is uh, at each step, uh, the bias of the error is squared. And so uh, because our running time will be close to exponential, we know that we can distinguish a bias which is only almost uh, exponentially, smallly, uh, exponentially small. And so uh, if we start uh, for, with a Gaussian of uh, standard deviation, which is uh, alpha times q, then uh, at the beginning, we have a bias which is exponential of minus alpha squared. And we want to end up with uh, almost exponential of minus n. And so if we define uh, beta uh, as the square root of n divided by alpha, 
we can uh, take the number of blocks, which is k, as uh, almost uh, two log beta. And uh, therefore, uh, each block is of size n over k. And so, uh, because we want to, uh, to have a list uh, of samples which, uh, where, you can, uh, where you can subtract and uh, remove n over k coordinates, then the complexity is q to the n over k. Uh, but it was uh, it was uh, observed before that there is no need to fully reduce each coordinate if the secret is very small and in particular binary and so it, what we only need to have is uh, a small bias for each coordinate uh, so uh, here what we uh, what we remark is that having different block sizes is uh, is better, and uh, we uh, search uh, block size such that all coordinates have the same bias. Uh, and uh, we also uh, add a new idea to maintain independence in the error, uh, so that uh, we can prove a faster algorithm. Um, so uh, we will partition uh, our, co our n coordinates uh, with k values. Uh, which are uh, the di's, the beginning of each block, and we also have quantization coefficients for each block. So here is the algorithm. Uh, we start uh, for all uh, for all uh, input samples. We uh, extract the coordinates in our block. We multiply by the quantization coefficient, and we round uh, this number. And then after uh, you uh, look in the table and if there is nothing then you store the sample and if there is no and if there is something then you output the difference because then uh, the difference between uh, the the coordinates of the difference will be uh, smaller than one over q and uh, you empty the uh, table so, so that you have independence in your output samples so since uh, the coordinate, uh, any coordinate at step i which is reduced is of size one over qi, we can compute the bias as uh, being uh, around exponential of minus one over qi squared. And then uh, there are k minus i subsequent uh, subtraction. And so the bias is squared uh, k minus i times. And we want for each coordinate the bias to be around one so that the total bias will be, uh, 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 will be uh, around uh, sub-exponential, uh, or around exponentially small. And so uh, we can compute the qi as being uh, two to the k, around two to the k minus i divided by two. And uh, because if we want uh, to uh, produce a, lot of, a large number of samples, then we can compute the length uh, because the number, uh, the number of possible quantization must be uh, somewhat below the size of the list each time. Uh, so we can compute the length uh, as being uh, two log m divided by k minus i, and then where m is the size of the list, and uh, then we can uh, deduce uh, m from the parameter. So in this case, uh, we have a complexity which is linear in the size of the, of the list, uh, or a polynomial. And so uh, the final result is that the running time is two to the n over two divided by log log beta, which is sub-exponential for even small beta. So we have implemented the uh, algorithm uh, for binary LWE uh, with uh, many samples. And so for dimension 128, the previous result was uh, we need time around two to the 74, uh, but uh, we run it in uh, 13 hours with a lot, uh, much less uh, samples. And uh, it's still, even if it's absolutely fast, uh, in practice, lattice reduction is much faster for this kind of parameters. 
So uh, now we can uh, consider another variant of this problem, which is we have only n samples instead of unlimited, but we have binary noise. And the way we can solve this variant is that we take a small linear combination of samples, and uh, this generate, uh, we can generate this way a very large number of samples, and we can prove that uh, it uh, works. Um, also, for the n true crypto system, uh, the, if we want to recover the key, then uh, we need to find uh, S in this equation uh, in the ring uh, Zx divided by x to the n minus 1 q. And uh, we can view this uh, as being a binary LWE with n samples and binary noise, because each time uh, S and E are binary in this uh, setting, and we only know A. And uh, so uh, we can uh, we can view this as a, a matrix a vector matrix product, and so with a structured matrix. And if we forget the structures, then uh, it's exactly the problem that we described. So heuristically, it also works for uh, for entry. Now the subset sum problem. So uh, it's a very old problem. The vector, we are given a vector of integers which are uniform uh, between zero and A. And uh, we are given the scalar product with uh, some binary uh, vector. And we want to recover this binary vector. So we define uh, the density, which is n over log m. And uh, for small density, it was known that lattice reduction algorithms are efficient. Uh, but if the dimension is not too small, then uh, it's more efficient to reduce it to binary LWE uh, with beta, which is 2 to the 1 over d. And so therefore, using the previous algorithm, you can solve it uh, in sub-exponential time uh, for small d. And uh, one uh, crypto system was based on the subset sum problem, and the density they used uh, was uh, one over log n. So uh, this gives a fast algorithm for this problem. So finally, we know that uh, LWE uh, is proven out. So this means that if we solve LWE, then we can solve a lot of uh, lattice problems. And so uh, when you uh, modify the reduction given, uh, we have uh, this problem for lattices. And uh, this is the only uh, algorithm known which can uh, solve them efficiently. So um, uh, the first one is ability. So uh, we are given a basis of a lattice and a point which is uh, close to the lattice. Uh, and in the old problem, we had to find uh, the lattice point. And in this one, uh, we also know that uh, the vector coefficient is small. And um, here you can see that uh, the smallness is uh, expressed as uh, L2 norm, uh, because our algorithm also works for, uh, for binary LWE, but uh, also, if the secret is uh, small in N2 norm, it can be modified. Uh, there are also uh, equivalence uh, in this setting of uh, all problems. So uh, the unique SVP problem was uh, there is a short vector in a, um, in a lattice, uh, which is much shorter than uh, everything else. And uh, the goal is to find this short vector. And if we add the condition uh, that uh, it can be expressed as a small linear combination of a known basis, uh, then uh, this is th this problem. And we can also solve it efficiently. And finally, uh, it's the same for gap SVP. So this problem is uh, to distinguish between having a large vector, uh, well, only large vectors, and uh, having one small vector, and we modify it with uh, having a small vector, which is also a linear combination of a known basis. And so for all these problems, uh, the complexity uh, that our algorithm gives is uh, 2 to the uh, n over 2 divided by uh, something uh, which is uh, complicated. But 
as soon as uh, the large uh, S is uh, much smaller than uh, beta, then this means that we have a sub-exponential algorithm, and uh, this was not known before. We only had a lattice reduction uh, algorithm to solve these kind of problems, which take time uh, exponential uh, for now. Okay, so uh, there are a few open problems on this subject. So the first one is, uh, is it possible to combine uh, BKW and lattice reduction? Because lattice reduction is uh, very fast in practice, while BKW is not uh, so fast, uh, or at least only asymptotically. And also, uh, it's not very useful if uh, the noise is very small compared to the modulus. Uh, lattice reduction is then much faster, so uh, it would be a great thing to combine the two. Another problem is what if the cigarette is very small? In particular, it can be sparse, uh, and uh, this was used in the, uh, several crypto systems. Um, and here, uh, the, the best algorithm we know is essentially brute force, uh, so we, we should be able to do better. Uh, also, uh, do we need uh, the error to be independent from the vectorial part of the samples? Uh, this, uh, is, uh, this is required in an analysis, but uh, every time we test in practice, then uh, everything is fine. And in particular, this would allow to uh, solve the learning with running problem with the same complexity than uh, LWE, and we don't know how to prove this uh, yet. And finally, uh, a problem which is related to the two previous one, it's what's the best way to run BKW with a very small number of samples. Uh, we know that taking linear combinations works, but at least for now, the, the best, uh, we need to take a quite large linear combination, and this means that the noise we have in our samples will be uh, very large. And we know in practice it works with uh, much smaller noise. So uh, it would be uh, great to prove things uh, with uh, much smaller noise. Any question?